What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your humble host, Timothy J. Ward, back again with another episode of the Daily Ward Live. We do this every day, Tuesday through Friday, through Saturday, excuse me, five days a week. And we also sometimes throw other little live streams in there, other little shorts, other little videos. But we're doing the show. This is episode three, our first week of doing this. And I have a confession to make. Some of you already know this. This was not the topic that we were slated to talk about today. If you check the schedule, the schedule said we were going to talk about living a car-free life. Ten ways to get by without a car. I woke up this morning. I said, I don't really want to talk about that. I woke up this morning. And I said, wow, that is a valid topic, Timothy, especially in the times we live. I don't want to talk about that this morning. And it's my show. So, <laughs> so I occasionally get to make decisions like that. Occasionally I get overruled by, you know, my imaginary friend who's sometimes in the closet, sometimes in the backseat of my car. Occasionally I get overruled. Today I didn't get overruled. I said, I'm not. I don't want to talk about cars today. I want to talk about something that actually popped in my head this morning. And that's why, like, I realized how serious it was. I said, let's talk about it before we get into all that. While we're waiting for more people to get the notification, come join us. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at in the world. I already see somebody saying they're in Australia. International. That's what I love about the internet. Thank you so much for uh, clicking and spending time with your boy. If you're watching the replay of this, shout out to you as well. Maybe you can make it to the next one live, but those of us here right now, we are live. This ain't pre-recorded. You could be doing a lot of things, but you're spending time with your boy, Timothy J. Ward, a.k.a. the live stream king. And I, I also wanted to do kind of a just talky one today because the last couple ones, you know, we've done. I kind of had notes and list. And while I love doing those, sometimes I also like just like talking. OK, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I love <laughs> I love just like talking. You know, it's going to be a good one. I got my Marvel shirt on today. You know, it's going to be a good one. I'm in a good mood. I'm wearing my glasses today, ladies and gentlemen, because I feel like I've been like feeling a little eye strain lately, especially in this eye. So what happened? Mm, see what I did that? I, ooh. Um, I think I'm nearsighted now. So I need my glasses to see like far away and I never wear them. But occasionally, if I'm driving somewhere, if I'm on the interstate and I'm going somewhere, taking a trip, I'll wear them just because, like, you want to be able to see as best as possible when you're on the expressway. So a lot of times, if I don't wear my glasses, sometimes the some of the signs and stuff, I can't see them soon enough or, you know, so I'll wear them on the expressway. But what happens after that is if it's a long enough drive and I wear my glasses, when I don't wear them, like, the next day, I could, you know, my eyes feel, it's kind of like my eyes don't know what to do from going from no glasses to like glasses back to no glasses. So I've been feeling a little weird eye strain lately. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna wear my glasses for a week or two, just see what happens. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I explained that. Nobody, I, nobody asked, I know. Nobody asked, but I like to let the people know. He's just mad he got outvoted about the topic for this, for this stream. Actually, I don't even want my imaginary friend to have a gender. They, I don't want my imaginary friend to have a gender. I'm very progressive. They are just mad they got outvoted about the topic of the stream. Checking the numbers, looking at the comments here. Uh, yeah, in this first part, ladies and gentlemen, I'll probably do a lot of talking. Um, if there's something you want to add to the conversation, there is the super chat. But I'll probably be reading the, the comments as well. And, you know, because this is one of those topics where, you know, I think audience participation will go very well. Um, so we just said 100 people. Let's get started. Let's get started. Some of y'all were there when this initially happened. Some of y'all heard me talk about this the past couple days. But uh, a day or two ago, I think it might have been Tuesday, a couple days ago, someone asked me in a live stream. It's like if you never dated again or never had another like romantic attachment again in your life, like could you do that? A question along those lines. And one of the things I love about, you know, live streaming and being a content creator is that I get asked 
questions that like I would never ask myself. And I also like the fact that because it's live and as soon as I read a question, I have to like come up with an answer. I like the fact that it makes me have to just like, you know, you know, a lot of times you don't get the, the chance to a lot of times in life we get asked a question and we get the chance to like come up with the right answer or come up with the answer that makes us look best or we get to, we just get a chance to kind of like doctor up our answer. You know, when it's live on the Internet, you don't get a chance to do that. So I didn't really get a chance to be like, hmm, I just had to go off like quick emotion. And, you know, I thought about it. You know, you can think about something pretty deeply in about five seconds. And I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Honestly, if I never dated again, I'd be fine. You know? It's like, I would be fine. You know, I got other stuff going on in my life. You know, there's other, other types of love, the romantic love. There, there's my passion in life. There's what I consider my ministry, my calling. I was like, I got all that going on, like, and I really enjoy my life now, single. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think it would bother me. But that was like step one. I've honestly been thinking about that a lot the past couple of days. Like I was even thinking about it this morning when I woke up. And what it made me realize is that, and this is why I say in the, in the title, it's changing my life. Because I started to realize that so many of our decisions in life are based on attracting a mate. So many of the, our decisions in life are based on attracting a mate. And when I gave myself permission, when I said, yeah, I'd be fine never dating again, it's just amazing how in the, the couple of days since then, a lot of times I would find myself thinking along certain thought patterns because I want to do X, Y, Z, because I think it'll attract a mate. I want to do A, B, C, because I think that means like women would like that. That would make me more attractive to women. That would make me a more, you know, suitable spouse. Since I told myself, we really don't have to date ever again. A lot of the times when those, those just pre-programmed thoughts popped to my head, I was like, oh, we ain't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like so many, like little things I'm realizing, I'm like, oh, wait a second. The reason I really care about that is because I think it would make me hotter to chicks, to women, excuse me. If chicks offend you, I'm sorry, women. So many things, how we look, how we dress, how much money we make, so many things. It's all about attracting a mate. And if you give yourself permission to never date again, never get married again, you don't have to worry about all this stuff. Now, that's not saying I'm never going to date again. But I gave myself permission not to. Like, we are programmed to feel like that's one of the boxes you have to check. We're programmed to believe like that is one of the metrics you have to meet in life if you do not find someone else who for a long length of time is willing to date you or marry you or call you their own, then there's something wrong with you. This is what we're taught. So we spend our whole life always looking for that. And I think even sometimes when we're like, oh, I'm kind of pulling back from dating or whatever, we still have that underlying programming, which makes us still make decisions based on that. You may not be looking for a mate, but you're still doing things because you want potential mates to look at you. I don't care no more. I don't care no more. I've always just been Tim. But I'm going to be even more Tim now because I realized Tim was doing a lot of stuff to track the ladies. I don't need to do that no more. If they're attracted, cool. Let me know. DM me. No, <laughs> I mean, like I'm saying, it's not saying like dating is wrong or, and we're going to have a stream one day about are healthy relationships even possible? It's not of that. It's not bashing women. It's not bashing men, any gender, whatever. Like, it's just saying that I realized that like when I was just like, I never have to date again and I'll be fine, that it's kind of taken some pressure off of me. That I didn't even know was there. I didn't even know the pressure was there. You know? There's a lot of like unseen pressure in our lives. And I think this, this idea of, of dating. And like having to date somebody. And for some people I know that is a big thing to do. To them. For some people, you might be the type of person that you're like, hey, I really want to meet somebody. And I get that, too. I respect that. Um, I'm just saying that 
for every one group of people, there's like an opposite group of people. And you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of us out there that I think if we allowed ourselves to say, hey, that's not something I have to achieve. There does not have to be another human being in my life that says they love me on that level. I'll still be okay. I'll still love my life. That could free us up to do a lot more things we kind of wanted to do or live our lives more uniquely the way we want to. I'm just trying to be out here living my best life. And honestly, I'm a big believer that when the more uniquely you are you, the more when someone is attracted to you, the more they're attracted to you. Because that's part of the problem. Like, I think a lot of these things we do to attract mates or, or, or things we do that we think will make us more desirable to, to other people aren't us. You know, you may not really care about money, but you might be like, hey, if I make more money, you know, that makes me more. Tra-. Men think this all the time. If I make more money, women will be more attracted to me. The problem there is if you do end up making that money and someone is attracted to you because of the money and y'all get together, it's going to be a problem because you don't care about the money. If you were just making money for someone else and that person comes around for the money, there's going to be a problem because you don't care about the money or whatever it is, whatever it is you do. The day is going to come when you stop caring about that. And that person's going to be like, wait a second, that's the main reason I came around because you were such a good dresser or whatever it is. And now you ain't doing it no more. So I think like the more uniquely like us we are, the more likely we are to attract someone who is attracted to us. And letting go of the ideal that like I got, I have to find somebody. Why ain't God sent me nobody? <laughs> That's the craziest one. I'm sorry if anyone says that. I'm just, I'm telling you, it's been a couple days and I already feel so much freer. I'm all about being free. This is really helping me. Nayway, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat squad. I appreciate that generous super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Coming through with the pounds. Says I'm I'm 54 and I've given myself permission never to marry again after the death of my wife two years ago. Uh, sorry to hear about the death of your wife. First off, let's say that. Um, and hey, you know, I, and, and, and that's, I think giving yourself permission is something people never do. And I think it's awesome. And it's good to see that someone else did it. Um, so just be like, and that speaks to the love you and your wife had um, to just be able to say, I'm giving myself permission not to do it. It doesn't have to be a part of my life. Like if it happens organically, cool, but I'm not out here chasing it. Super Jazz Squad. Thank you. International Super Jazz Squad. Thank you. Nay Wayo. Telling you. There was stress and pressure on me. I didn't even realize. Because part of it is that ideal that you're like, people are going to look at me funny if I'm not dating. Which I've kind of gotten over that. Since I haven't dated since, what, like 2014? Kind of gotten over that. It's going on a decade, folks. A couple years will be a decade. Kind of gotten over that. But I think that is in your head. And then there is kind of that, oh, what's wrong with me that nobody's picking me type stuff. But when you give yourself permission to never date again, you don't have to worry about none of that. Maybe there is something wrong with me. It doesn't matter, though, because I'm not worried. (laughs) You know what I mean? If it's not a metric I'm worried about, like, meeting or a box I'm not worried about checking, I don't have to worry about whether there is something wrong with me in that area. If I'm a horrible cook, but I never cook. Doesn't matter. No one will ever know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not to mention, so I'll mention it takes a lot of time and energy and just thought. All to try to just get set up to possibly find a situation that's going to be what you want it to be. If you're just going along in life and then someone comes along, and you're like, oh, I could date this person. Cool. If it doesn't work out, whatever. I was chilling before. But like a lot of people just put so much time, energy and effort in trying to meet somebody. And every time someone comes into their life, they're like, oh, this might be the one. And then when it doesn't work out, they're devastated. And then they're right back on that hamster wheel. This is another rat race, folks. This is another rat race. This is another rat race here. Just that infinite cycle of trying to find the one. 
which is it, it, I'm getting I'm getting deep here. Like, you know, you do realize, and I've said this many times, but this concept of the one is only about 300 years old. Follow me on this one, folks. Real quick, we're going to acknowledge Jessica London Super Chat. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So my new favorite show, The Daily Ward. Yes! Did not disappoint today. I need to hear these words today. I appreciate you, Mr. Ward. The live stream king. I appreciate you too, Jessica. And, and, and the love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm glad it's your new favorite show. That makes me feel good. Thank you. And the, the, that you're appreciating the time. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, we do Super Chat Squad. Super Chat Train. You do realize that all a lot of these ideas we have about like the one the one person you meet and happily ever after this came about in like the romantic period in like the 1700s before that marriage was really about just like power influence status something you did it was a kind of a business arrangement or just made sense you know you know, it was between, you know, the nobles did it for, for power, things like that. Ordinary people did it because, like, you know, our two families are friends. They have a son. We have a daughter. They get married. They stay free. You know what I mean? It was a lot more of that. All this concept of, like, true love in the one came about when books came about. Let's talk about this. A lot of this stuff we believe in came about when books came about and they needed to have some stuff for people to read that was like engaging. And that's when you had the poets and the romantics and all this stuff came about. And they're like, oh, you meet somebody is a love at first sight. No one ever said that before. No one ever said that before. May, not, not saying it didn't happen. But even, you know, in the like back then. You know how much like all like, by the way, they try to make it seem like now we do more sleeping around than people ever did. That's not true. In my opinion, people always didn't slip around, but like they just knew when it was marriage time, it was marriage time. And if they did some sleeping around afterwards, nobody talks about it. But that's a different story. My, my point bringing that up is, you know, were there people in the past who like might have saw somebody and there was a lot of lust involved and they had a little fun? Sure. We're going to be attracted to other humans. But I think this ideal of love at first sight, you immediately know you're going to marry this person. You are going to stay together forever. They came up with that in the romantic period. Hence the name. Can you meet somebody and over time realize, yeah, I want to spend my life with this person? Yes. This whole love at first sight, you know what? Oh, that's come on. All this. I have to find something. The perfect match. Come on. Man. I've let go of all that. If it happens to you, fine. I hope it, if it's happened, great. But I just think we have these views that like, you know, uh, uh, especially a single people, that like someone just, the, the one, the perfect person for us is going to come into our life. What are the chances? And you're in knee knuckle, Kansas, population 5,000, and you think the perfect person, <laughs> come on. I'm telling you, it's easier to let go of all that. If you meet somebody and y'all can get along with each other, let's get along with each other for as long as we can. See what happens. I don't think there's a soulmate, one specific person out there. And like, I missed out on something if I don't find them. Now, if someone comes in my life, we want to hang out. Like, there's no rules. If we want to hang out for a night, cool. If we want to hang out for three months, cool. If it turns into 30 years, cool. But if that never happens, I'm fine with that. I've given myself permission. I don't have to be looking. The universe is abundant. If that's meant to happen, it'll, it'll let it happen. Yeah, we need to send Tim somebody. He's going a little crazy. He could use that. Or it might be like, Tim don't even need that. He's doing Tim. And that's another thing, too. And I, I talked about this a little yes, last night in my stream. I feel like a lot of times when we are only like out here just looking for romantic love and like when we don't find romantic love, we're miserable. I think that's a slap in the face to all the other love we have. That's a slap in the face to your friends, your family members. You might even have some coworkers you love working with, you know, all the other love you have in your life, I think is a slap in the face when you're down 
because you haven't found one type of love. A slap in the face. You got people, we talked about this yesterday too. You got people been in your life for your whole life, decades, been through thick and thin and back through thick with you. But that's not enough. We have to have this other type of love, which is the same love. It's just you spend more time with them and you sleep with them. Like, you know what I mean? It's all love. There's, yeah, there's varying levels, but it's all love. There's different things you do with different people, but it's all love. I don't need to date. If it happens, cool. I'd much rather have just like friends. Honestly, where I'm at right now, I'd much rather just have good friends. And I, I am blessed to have like great friends, a lot of good female friends. I enjoy their company. And one thing I really love about it is because there's like almost no way I can mess that up. My female friends now, how how would we ever mess a friendship like that up? Because there's no weird hanky-panky stuff going on with us. None of that. We're just really good friends. You're just really good friends with somebody. It's hard to mess it up, especially if you've been friends for a long time. What would one of us do? But like in a relationship, it's so easy to mess it up. People are always just looking for you. Like when you're in a relationship with someone, they assume you need to know everything. You know everything about them. You know all the right moves to make. You should know what they're thinking at all times. You should never look at another human being. You definitely better not sleep with another human being. You better not have another human being texting you. You better not stay up too late. There's so many rules in a relationship. I want to move in together. You don't. Now it's a problem. There's so many ways a relationship can go bad. It's stress. Not once again, not bashing relationships, but I'm just saying, as it is now, I'd much rather just have friends. That way I can't get in trouble. My friends know my faults. <laughs> Even friends with benefits, I can't really get in no trouble. Worst case scenario, one day she's just like, this ain't working no more. We're no longer friends with benefits. Cool. No one's got anything invested. But like my real, my regular just friends, like they, we know each other's faults. They're like, I know that's Tim. Some days he ain't gonna answer the phone. They don't get mad. Two weeks later, I answer the phone. They're like, I was wondering if he was gonna answer the phone again. Try that with somebody you dating. Once again, not bashing dating, marriage, or relationships. I'm just saying, I think it's, you know, a positive step if you're feeling that way to just go ahead and give yourself permission. Think it through. What would my life look like if I never dated again? Am I cool with that? Just give yourself permission to never date again. Then you ain't got to worry about it. That's one less thing to worry about. One less thing to worry about. No pressure. Y'all saw how it was, you know, before I decided I wasn't going to do it. The, the young lady at the Target that I found very attractive, all this pressure. You got to talk to her, Tim. You got to talk to her. You got to talk to her. Why? I don't have to. Now there's no pressure. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> I'm free, man. I'm free, man. I'm free. Now, seeing as I'm saying all this and I'm, I'm so free, I'll probably meet somebody next week. Um, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> they going to clown me on the internet. I'm going to tell you, man, I'm free. Like, a couple days. When I go to the store, I don't care what I wear. I never really did. But these days, I, honestly, I, 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 you, one place I used to dress halfway decent was Whole Foods. You know, the people going Whole Foods is a little, you know. So I always used to be like, oh, if I'm going to Whole Foods, I'm going to put my good Nikes on. Like, you know, I'm going to throw a nice shirt on. I'm going to Whole Foods. Because I get a lot of my packages delivered to Whole Foods. Because I don't trust these people around my apartment complex. Um, Yesterday, after I finished my stream and, and went, went, was walking around, I had my old Nikes on. I had my old faded. I got I got a pair of green pants. Y'all seen them in a million videos. A green khakis. They're like two different colors because I've worn them in the sun so much. The bottom is faded more than the top. Like it's an old brown shirt, like old gray shirt on. Did not care. I'm I'm, I'm the new. I don't care. I'm like, who am I trying to impress? I'm not trying to meet nobody at the Whole Foods. They wouldn't want me to know it. Yeah, they probably would. Um, I'm him. I'm really him. But uh, Himothy. But um, I, I'm like, you know what? 
Oh, but uh, RTN said I swore up dating years ago and nobody has came around. Well, that's cool too. That worked. That's fine too. If you've really swore, once again, I haven't sworn off dating. I've given myself permission to never date again. I'm good either way. So I don't care if nobody comes around. If you've really said I'm done or I don't care, you really don't care. I don't care. I'm good. Will there be some positives that come with dating? Yes. Will there be some negatives that come with it? Yes. So like it equals out. I'm chilling. You know, I think for a lot of people, it goes to the programming. I think we've been taught that the highest level of living is finding someone to share your life with. I think it's one of the higher levels, but I don't think it's the highest level. I don't think it should be the ultimate attainment. I know some people that are like, man, and because they've told me this, they're like, Tim, if you don't find someone to marry you, what would be the point in your life? If you don't ever have kids, what's the point in life? I'm like, I don't know what y'all's life looks like, but I got all kinds of stuff going on. I got all kinds of stuff I do and I enjoy doing without a partner, without kids. I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to keep enjoying my life and not be down because I haven't reached certain metrics that I really don't care about. Now, once again, if you care about, and you know, for some people, that's, that's their goal. Always has been. I know some people always want to get married, always want to have kids. Shout out to you. Uh, Stefan, I don't, I don't know if you read the title correctly. I don't, I don't know if we would ever be able to know how you read the title. Um, sorry, some questions are funny to me. Um, if that's what you've always wanted to do, go for that. Because that's you, you know. But I think for a lot of us, it's not, it's not really. We just... We've been taught that we had to care. I don't care. I gave myself permission to never date again. And once again, I have to keep reiterating this because I'm reading the comments. I did not say I was never going to date again. I gave myself permission to never date again, which means I don't have to work towards finding someone to date. If I end up getting married, dating, oh, never getting married. Um, I'll never say never on that. If I end up dating, cool. If I end up finding someone and we start dating, cool. But I've given myself permission to never date again. So I can I can say never on that because I've given myself the permission. If that makes any sense. Jacob Moore, thank you, thank you, thank you, Super Chat Squad. It's a good message today, Tim. Living the dream and hope Alaska. Nice. Bro, I'm 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 feeling Alaska. Something is telling me, shout out to you, Super Chat Squad. Thank you, Jacob. Something is saying, Tim, take you a trip to Alaska this year. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's, it, it, I've been, ever since last year, I was like, man, I want to go to Alaska again. So we'll see. We'll see. Thank you, Jacob. Super Chat Squad. Let me get caught up in these comments. I don't want to. Yeah, it's about, it's about like pressure release. We have so much pressure on ourselves in life. So much pressure. You And you can tell how much we've been told and sold and programmed to believe something when you talk on topics like this and there will be people that like can't see it. Once again, I'm not saying dating's bad or any of that, but I'm just saying you can come to a place where you're like, I don't ever need to date again. There will be some people who, who can't, not saying they have to come to that place, but they won't even be able to understand you getting to that place. They'll try to argue with you about you saying that. It's the pressure, it's the programming. Emperor says, oh, what about when you have an itch to scratch and you need relief, self-love only goes so far? Then I just go find somebody to scratch the itch with. That's an easy question. When I'm going to date somebody? Like, just go find, like, if I need to have sex, I just go find somebody to have sex with. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm different. It just, <laughs> maybe I'm different. But I told you, I'm, I'm 42 going on 43. Even that ain't, ain't a big deal to me. Like, I'm, 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 and I think, uh, I think sobriety helped me with this. 
wanting more than anything in the world to take a drink and not allowing myself to do it now for four years, I think helped me a lot with self-control. So like there can be an itch you, you want to scratch, but like you can have enough self-control that you just think your way through it. If I really, really, really want to have sex and ain't nobody around to have sex with, I'm a grown man with self-control. I just don't have sex. Like, or I go to the bar or I call up a friend, I find somebody to have sex with. You know what I mean? Like, but there's nothing that like can come into my life that I know there's no urge I can have that I know I can't suppress. So I'm definitely not gonna like. I'm definitely not going to like go out and find somebody to date that I'm not really attracted to just for sex. You know, all, all urges can be fought through. I mean, it's just a chemical in your brain saying have sex. Now, yeah, sometimes you want to be close to somebody. You want a little human touch, but like get you a little, you know, get somebody else who's on the same page. They like, I ain't trying to date you. I don't really even like you like that, but you you cuddle good. <laughs> You're good with them hands. Let's let's hang out. Anyway, anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Coast of Dev, yeah, I'm with you. And and I think some of our personalities just naturally lend ourselves to like singleness or you know long distance relationships or other things. Um, and these are kind of really the people I'm talking to. A person who's always wanted the traditional dating marriage type stuff, it might be you, but some of us, it's not us. Like, yeah, like you said, the, the ideal of, of every every day, someone asking, what do we got? Like both my, like say I'm working Monday through Friday, 40, 50 hours. Then on my day off, both them days, there's somebody else there asking what we're going to do. Nah, I can't. I can't. Nah. Nah. Nah, every other weekend, maybe. But like, I just not built like that. Uh, Carla, I have, I have definitely uh, uh, know all about Into the Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty famous book. Ricardo retired from, from dating and work. Nice. Nice. Alex, yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of love, man. Like, that's what people don't get. Like, there's all kinds of love. You got all this other love going on, but you're bitter because you haven't had romantic love. When, if you look at the stats, all this other type of love usually works out better than this romantic love. We have the divorce stats. Every, I mean, look at it this way. Everybody you know has dated and had two or three breakups. Everybody you know. Everybody you know has had at least two or three, probably more breakups. A lot of people you know have had a divorce or two. Now, I want you to go back and look at the stats. Everybody you know has had best friends. I promise you the breast, the best breast friends. The best friends breakup stats are way better than the romantic dating and marriage breakup stats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's possible to lose best friends as well, too. Yes, that happens. But I promise you, everybody you know done broke up with a few people in their lifetime. But most of the people you know have had a best friend for the whole life. Somebody that has been their friend for decades and will be their friend until they die. Now, you may not see each other as much as you used to, things of that nature, but most all of us got somebody who's been there for decades, ain't went nowhere. That's the type of love we should be homing in on. That's the, the, the forever love. Close friends. But nah, we want this other type of love. Okay. All right. All right. If it happens, it happens. I'm just saying. I'm not against it. I'm just saying. We ain't got to spend our whole life chasing after it. Feeling like a failure because we don't have it. It does not take someone saying, I love you for you to be complete. You can be complete without it. Some good water. Some good water. I use my filter. I got me a little Brita, a little Brita water filter. Uh, hey, 
and that's a good point too. Uh, some people don't want, don't want, you know, some people don't have dysfunctional families. Some people don't want friendship type love. That is a good point. That is a good point. If you just want, it's, it's your life. There's no rules. If you just want romantic love, cool. Cool. You know, there's no one size fits all. I just know for like me and for a lot of us, it's kind of take it or leave it. And, and I always like to bring up narratives that aren't normal. You might have noticed that, folks. I'm always trying to bring up the narrative that's abnormal. I don't like going along with the crowd. I'm not one of them lemmings who's just going to follow behind everybody else. I don't run with the herd. If it makes sense, I will. I probably just won't talk about it. If it makes sense to do what everybody else is doing, I'll probably do it. We just probably won't talk about it. But if what the herd is doing doesn't make sense, I'm not going to do it, and we're going to talk about it. You know? Um, and I just, I think this is one where this ideal that, especially men, Especially men feel like in order to be a real man, I have to have a beautiful woman by my side. That's not the not 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 that's society. That's them telling you that. I can do everything a real man can without being married or dating. What's the difference? I just got more money and free time than him. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Uh, I, I can do more. I can do more than your so-called real man because I got more time and, 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 and freedom. Yeah, I can't be no sheep, man. I got to, you know. And it's kind of my thing now. I feel like it's a lot easier now because uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, like when I first started, you know, going against the the, the grain, you know, you, you know you, you used to going with the grain. So it's a little, you know, a little disconcerting, a little uncomfortable. But once you get used to it and it's like my thing, I'm always looking for stuff. What y'all doing wrong now? Or what are y'all doing that I don't think I want to do? Or sometimes it's like this one that just falls in my lap, you know? I'm like, you know what? I gave my permission to never date. And all of a sudden, I just feel like the pressure's been lifted. I'm already making different decisions. And some of the things that I do want to start doing now that I'm like, oh, I want to do them. Like, I do want to start, you know, working out more. And I'm like, I used to be like, oh, I'm going to work out. I'm going to get big, get bigger. I'm like, nah, I just trying to get healthy now, champ. Like, it ain't even, <laughs> it ain't even, you know what I mean? Like, it ain't even about that. I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm just trying to get healthy. You know, I'm just trying to live a little longer. You know what I mean? I got to worry about that now. I'm reading these comments, man. They're going quick. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to see them. Theo over here getting deep with with I. Okay, okay. Liverpool in the building. Armando, appreciate that. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to see. You know, the world for what it really is. And the more I tell you, the more you question, the more you have to question. The more you question, the more you have to question. And the more you start to see it. I'm always saying, you know, question everything, but 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 no, it's a it get ready for a deep dive, you know. Because uh appreciate that, Jan. Thank you. Because yeah, man, it's it's A lot of a lot of what we were taught, man, just ain't. Come on now, Kushite. That's people be asking some some personal questions out here, boy. Hey, LA baby, thank you. Uh, is Isla great? Um, that's a good point. That's a good point. It, it 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 always is like when you're up, and you're doing good. You don't mind being single. You're like single again, but you're on your trainer back on the you know. But when you're down and you look around and you see people in like relationships, that's sometimes when you're just like, 
you low key start to hate. You low key be like, look at them. I bet they ain't even that happy. Like, no, nah, but uh, yeah, you do start to, you know, when, you, when you're kind of down, that can't be one of those times when it's just like, but that moves me further, closer to like, all right, what, what can I do? You know what I mean? I'm trying to be as complete and be a complete person on my own without being like, I need it from somebody else. Right. So I'm like, okay, what can I do to get me out of this funk? Because the more complete I am, if I do get in a relationship, that's just more completeness I'm bringing to the relationship. But if I'm like seeking a relationship because I got issues going on, I'm bringing them issues to the relationship. Like I'm coming in the relationship looking for a fix for something. That's never good. Because that person ain't going to want to be your fix. Just like, I don't want to be somebody's fix. It might seem, especially for men, we like the little, the whole damsel in distress thing. It might seem cool at first. It might seem cool we're fixing, but after a while that gets old. And then say you go in the relationship looking for a fix and then like you get fixed. Now what? Now what you came to a relationship for is gone. Do you still want to be there? You know what I mean? But yeah, I get you. I get you on that. I get you on the, yeah, seeing other people be like, mm. Uh, how do I deal with the friend zone? Um, so especially when you're close friends and one person doesn't want to take the next step. Should they still remain friends? Um, I think so. I think so. Like if you're friends with somebody and you're genuinely friends, you're not just playing friends with them because you want to sleep with them or date them. If you're genuinely friends and then they're just like one of y'all, either they say it to you or you say it to them, hey, you want to take the next step? And they're like, no, nah, I like where we're at. Why wouldn't you stay friends? Like I talked about this the other day, but this literally happened to me a few months ago. Uh, someone that I worked at seasonal work with a couple different times and was like really feeling, but never said anything. Um, and I said something, we, we saw each other last year, end of last year. Um, and I said something and she was like, nah, I just like our friendship the way it is. We're still friends. We still talk on the phone. We still hang out. We're still good friends. Like my thing is, is if I really like, like her, I really cared about her as a friend. Would have been awesome to see if something else happened. From my opinion, yeah, but obviously not from hers. I'm not going to not be her friend anymore because she don't want to date me or sleep with me. Or, 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 yeah. The reason I'm her friend is all these amazing qualities. She still has all those amazing qualities. She just don't want to do the other stuff. So, like, we're still friends. Like, it honestly, our friendship did not skip a beat. Like, when she messaged me back, to be like, no, I just want to stay friends. We literally had a conversation after that. <laughs> like, like, we literally kept talking. I was like, all right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. By the way, what about so-and-so? And we had a few more lab bubble, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I just, if, 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 you, if you say, oh, hey, we're friends, want to take it to the next level, and I say no, and you stop being my friend, well, were you really my friend in the first place? Me thinks you always wanted something else which makes me think I made the right decision and not taking the next step because obviously you don't care about me. Just my opinion. I'd love to hear what y'all have to say about that. I'm with you on that, Matt. We all gonna be gone one day. Do what makes you happy. Uh, yeah, Kushite, the Bible does say be fruitful and multiply. Um, and a lot of the other holy books say similar things or different things. Like, 
doesn't mean I have to do it. <laughs> My opinion. Um, I, I love it when someone just quotes the Bible and acts like that's the end of the argument. A, not everybody believes in the Bible. I believe it's one of the holy books, but not everybody believes in the Bible. So, if, you know, to be fair, you should have to quote every holy book, which you could never do. Um, but yeah, like it doesn't, not to mention too, the Bible, because they do something, but that doesn't mean it has to be done by everybody. There are people who can't have kids. Are they doomed to a fiery hell? Because the Bible says be fruitful and multiply. If they literally like physically can't have kids, obviously not. So like there's exceptions, even if you're going strictly by the Bible. So like, I just, I don't know when people just quote the Bible, I'm just like, I could pull out any book and quote it. Hey, the book of Tim says you don't have to, you know what I mean? I could just totally, I could write my own book, which I'm going to one day. And it could say in there, you don't have to be fruitful and, be, and multiply. And every time someone says, this says this, I'm going to be like, well, the book of Tim says this in the discussion. I feel like I missed, wait, wait, what did I, ah, there it is. Miguel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Miguel, I appreciate that. Super chat squad. Should I've learned to accept either path in my life. If the universe sends me a, long, a lifelong partner, then cool. But if not, I'm at peace with either outcome. That's what I'm talking about, Miguel. Super chat squad, appreciate your input. Thank you. Appreciate the love. That's what I'm talking about right there. Being at peace either way. If it happens, cool. If it doesn't, cool, you know? But I think so many people are just like, it has to happen or my life isn't fulfilled. And so you spend your life stressing and worrying about it. And that makes your life even worse. Just, you know, being at peace with it. Like, hey, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't, it doesn't. Then you might look up five years from now and be like, oh, snap. I didn't even notice it. But like, I'm dating. <laughs> the beauty of that too is, It'll be a lot easier for you if that relationship messes up because you're like, hey, I'll just go back to being at peace. Either You know, it'll be painful when it breaks up. But like as soon as the pain's over, you're like, well, I'm back to whatever happens, happens again. Just I'm just being at peace with it. You know, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, Natalie, no, no disappointments or expectations. But, and that's how I try to live my life, like in general, is just kind of like, I might have goals. I got my goal list right over here. But even with those, I'm kind of like, when they happen, they happen. Like, I know a lot of them are going to happen because I believe the universe is abundant. So a good percentage of them, I think, are going to happen. But like, when they happen, they happen. I'm just living my life, enjoying my life, you know. And I think that's the same if someone really wants to be in a relationship. It can be the same. You can be like, okay, it's on my goal list to get married. When it happens, it happens. It doesn't have to be this every day, every waking moment on your eight different apps, swiping. That's stressful. Uh, Christine, the weather in Denver, it's, it's, I think it's, when I was out taking a walk, an uh, old guy told me, he's gonna, I shouldn't call it old. A guy told me, who was going, he said, it's going to be a hot one today. It was like, you know what I love? This is one thing I love. I love like older, like guys, that like 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 old dudes. I say, oh, what else would I call them? An elderly gentleman. I like an elderly gentleman who waves and then goes, like there was this guy, I love that. There was this guy walking today. Didn't know this man from Adam. Um, and we kind of, I was turning a corner and he was coming around and uh, he saw me. He's like, good morning. Cause I speak to everybody. He's like, good morning. I said, good morning. He was like, he waved, morning. And then he went, I love that. I love when like older guys give that extra thumbs up. Like that's a whole nother level. You can't, you gotta be like 80 to do that, by the way. You gotta be 75, 80 to do that. You can't do that at my age. You gotta earn that wave. Set it all right there. Set it all right there. Good to see you out here getting getting your exercise in, young man middle-aged man. Um, and then he was like, going to be a hot one today. And I was like, seems to be the trend. And then I started walking faster because like, I don't really want to talk. I want to walk and reminisce about the thumbs up. I don't really want to talk, sir. But uh, yeah, so I think the temperatures in, in the in the 90s.
Theo, appreciate you asking. He built the like button. Numbers looking good today. The numbers looking good today. Yeah, Angela, we know where you're at. It's always gonna be hot this time of year. You don't even need, you don't even need a the, the weatherman takes the takes the summer off out there where you're at. The weather person takes the summer off. It just, I mean, it's hot. Now we have Todd with the weather. Todd, what is it gonna look like today? Todd's like, he said, Todd's working remotely. The weather, the weather, the weather person in Arizona works remotely. Todd's at the house with his slippers on. He ain't even got out of bed. He like hot. Back to you. <laughs> Why y'all keep bothering me? I'm not, I'm not coming in. It's going to be hot. It's over 100 degrees. Back to you, Sheila. Okay, moving on. Oh, GB. Quoting the Bibles. The Corinthians. See? See? They don't like it when you... When you conflicting scriptures oh uh, yeah dark i've been to boulder before i'm trying to go back i might actually take the bus up there sometime this week does youtube make it easier for me to be me without judgment uh i don't know like i will say you do get a lot more judgment from people. So maybe it helps you to get used to it. You know, most people get judgment from five to six people around them, you know, maybe 10 to 12 people, their family and people they work with, you know, family, friends and coworkers. So most people have a very small like judgment pool. Um, because honestly, for most people, those are the same people that follow them on social media. So maybe a few more with social media. But, yeah, I think really putting yourself out there on YouTube does get you judgment. And you you see it every day in your comment section. So I'll say maybe that kind of gives you thicker skin, you know, because you get used to it. But I also think the fact that I come in contact with so many people who think like me helps. Because the average person, especially if you think like a lot of us do, you don't come in contact with anybody in real life who thinks like you. But the Internet allows you to, like, come in contact with other people who don't care what other people think about them and want to live their own life. And I think that's very empowering to be like, oh, I'm not alone. Even if I was alone, I'm still going to do it. But it's cool to know I'm not alone. So, yeah, I think, I think YouTube does help. Yeah, I think it does. I think it, I think it definitely does. But you definitely, yeah, get tons of judgment. Yeah. But you get, yeah, you kind of get used to it. Every now and then, one, one scene, uh, one, uh, one slips through. You know, someone will do a comment. You're like, ha! But <laughs> got me. But um, you know, I think it does help. You get, you get thicker skin. Where's that in the comment? Big P90, what advice would you give an extrovert for learning to be comfortable being alone? I don't know if I got any. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know what to say to an extrovert. I wouldn't know what to say to an extrovert on that. I really, I really wouldn't. Um, I really wouldn't. Like I'm I'm so introverted, I don't even know. Uh Bacon says, don't you feel with your growing success with women will be easier to come by? Um here, here's here's a, a, a common misconception, and a big part of that is because I'm always going to be humble, Tim, and just like, I'm, I would never be like braggy, Tim, right? So I feel like maybe I don't put the message out there enough that like, and, and I love telling like self-deprecating stories. That's part of it, too. I'm going to tell you the story about the girl who unmatched for me on Tinder, who I really thought was going to be a good match. I'm not going to tell you the stories about the other matches that I just didn't respond to. I'm not going to tell you about the women I unmatched from. So my point in all that is to say that like, I don't have a problem like getting women. I just don't be like following through a lot of times, you know, and I'm very picky when it comes to like someone I would actually date. So like I get offers you know, um, but it, and it, I could be the biggest celebrity in the world 
And I promise you, once a year, once or twice a year, someone might come along that I might think of potentially dating. Like, real, I'm like that. And not picky, like, she got to look a certain way. I, I just, if we vibe, we vibe. It's rare that I vibe with someone and I'm like, oh, I could date that person. Do I, you know, find some women attractive? Like, oh, we can hang out. We can do whatever. But yeah. And it's not saying I'm any special prize or anything either. If I meet someone and she wants to date me, I want her to have been very picky. I want both of us to have been very picky and be like, wow, we both like each other. Um, so, yeah, it's just. It's not like I don't have success with women. I just really. Don't be following up like I just, you know. You know, I get the comments, I get the DMs, I get the, you know, the look. I just don't, I don't know. So that's why I'm like, it makes sense for me to give myself permission not to date again. Cause honestly, I feel like I don't put forth the action to, to like really do it. So I think I don't really want to do it on some level. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. There's a comment I'm trying to. Oh, Quantum Leap. I got I got to I haven't looked into the uh, I got to look into that story about BG. I got to see what's, what's happening. There's a comment I wanted to address and I've lost it. No, I can't find it. Oh, Mike Zero One Davis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Said just getting in here. Hey, hey, hey. Better late than never. No, I'm joking. Good to see you, Mike. Hey, my boy Lee. My boy Lee. Lee, you've been all over the place. You in Estes Park, you in Boulder. What are you doing? You just you just act free out in these streets. You just free out in these streets. <laughs> 2008 crisis. I live in the Denver area. Somebody, yeah, I'm with you on that, you know? Um, I, I I appreciate the fact that, like, you know, I do it on my own. You know, when I'm sick, I, I got it. I got, you know what I mean? I got to figure it out. You know what I mean? When it's the money thing, I got to figure it out. Do I have some good friends that, like, if I know I really got down, would take care of, would help me out financially? Yeah. Um, have I been helped in the past? Yeah. But for the majority of the time, it's me. Um if I if, if it needs to get done, Tim gets it done. I like that. You know, now, if I ever do find somebody to date, will it be kind of cool to have a break from that for a little bit to be like, wow. Wow. Like, you know, here's someone to help out. Cool. But I take pride in the fact that, like, Tim does it on his own. I remember one time, boy, whew, one time you ever had to you ever been you ever been like throwing up. And like, like, like a, a diary in and, and had to drive yourself to the emergency room. I was throwing up. I was di had diarrhea. I had no strength. Had to drive myself to the emergency room. When I tell you it took me 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to get my pants and my shirt on to even think about leaving. I'm not exaggerating. Like this was bad, bro. Like this was bad. Like it literally, I literally got my, it took me 20 minutes to get my clothes on. And then I passed back out on the bed. And then like, all right, Tom, I laid there for like 30 minutes. All right, Tom, we got to do this. We, cause I'm like, bro, if I, I'm a, I'm gonna lay here and die, bro. Like I'm throwing up, I'm, I'm, I'm puking, I'm whatever. Like, I'm like, eventually I'm not gonna have enough energy to move. I'm getting more and more drained by the minute. I'm like, I gotta get, I got to get to the emergency room. Crawl downstairs. Get in my, I had a Jeep Cherokee at the time. And it's winter time in Colorado. This was 20, 28, 2019. No, 2018. This is 2018. Two years. 2018. Crawl. I'm like, I damn near literally crawl downstairs in the cold. Get in my Jeep Cherokee. It's like an 89 Jeep Cherokee. You got to warm that puppy up. That thing ain't just starting up and like driving. No, no. 
2 o'clock in the morning, a cold Colorado winter, 20-something-year-old Jeep Cherokee, you got to warm that puppy up. So I'm in, I get, I get, like, that was actually the worst part. While I was inside, it was whatever. When I got down to the truck and I've expended all that energy getting to the truck and, you know, even turning the key was, was, was murder. Uh, you know, I'm done. I got like no energy. And then I have to sit there for like 15 minutes in this truck so I can warm up so I can drive to the ER. That was the part where I was like, take me now. Lord, take me now. I'm done. That was the part would have been nice to have to, to have somebody who could have went down there and warmed the truck up for me or drove me. Or it would be nice to have a, 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 a you know a remote start. I honestly thought about it after that. I was like, I need to get a remote start. But uh, yeah, man, that that and then 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 once I've been there 15 minutes, it was just like back. Uh, just uh, I have to drive now. I was in Estes Park, so the hospital's literally like three minutes away. But that's a long three minutes. Yeah. Uh, then you get to, <laughs> then you get to the ER. You got to walk in. I tell you, it was murder, bro. It was murder. And the whole time you're like, please don't let me chat myself. Please just let me get in here and get to this bed. Once you get in the hospital, they put the gown on you, shat away. Whatever. They they get paid to clean that up. I would have felt bad still. But uh, I'm like, I yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It's a great story now. And I take pride in the fact that I did that. I don't want it to ever happen again. I don't want it to ever happen again. I got kind of that sick recently, um, but I ended up not having to go to the hospital because I learned to stay super hydrated. I know what to do now. Um, I don't know why I was that sick. Food poisoning, I don't know. It tends to happen to me once every two years or so. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that one, that one's, but we did it though. We did it. We did it. Star Bright, shout out to you. 13 months sobriety. Shout out to you. Yeah, I don't know why I was that sick. I think it was like food poisoning or something. Um, actually, no, no, no. There was a there was a bad virus going around the job at that time. Everybody got sick. Like everybody got and this was 2018, so it wasn't the vid or nothing. Everybody got sick and was missing days. You know, like you some a bug may go around, people miss a, a little work. This bug went around and like everybody was missing two, three days. Like it was, you know, they'd be like, oh, we're so-and-so. Oh, got the thing. Like, oh, see them next week. Like it was one of them. Cause I missed like two, three days. Um, or I think I took the next day off and then you yeah, think I missed like two days, which is unheard of. If I miss a day of work, it's crazy. Two days. But yeah, it was some bug that went around. Like everybody was getting it, man. It was crazy. Everybody was getting it. And then of course you had the people who weren't sick, but it was like, oh, I can take two days off and nobody will know. Um, yeah, it was crazy though. Yeah, it's funny when it's, when when you're talking about it, but when it was happening, boy, I was, I literally was like, man, I gotta get out of here, or like, they gonna find me in here. Like it was that. I just I'm like, I'm gonna have no strength. I have no strength. Like, and I couldn't eat, you know. So I, I think yeah, you just go to the hospital and they give you the IV drip and rehydrate you and. They give you the stuff for your stomach so you don't. I like I said, I've been through this many a time, um, two or three different times. They give you the stuff to like, you know, make you, you know, your stomach, set up your stomach down, keep you from diarrhea, in, and they just get you rehydrated. Um, and then you're pretty much fine. It's like if you had if you had all that stuff at the house, you could do it at the house. If you had an IV drip at the house and that good stomach medication, you could save yourself that $1,500. Ever much it was. I think I had insurance back then. Yeah, I think I had insurance back then. It would have been a whole different ball game if I had had insurance. I might have been like, you know what? No, nah, I would still win. This Estes Park, they're not going to come after you for their ER money. They got rich people. Yeah, that's a good point, Natalie. Yeah, if you had an IV drip at the house, you'd have to Put the needle in the arm yourself. That would, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Oh, Carol, I didn't call 911. 911 is expensive. 911 is expensive. For the for the, for the, the ambulance? And it was Estes Park. By the time, you mean, it was quicker for me to, I guarantee. Well, at 2 in the morning, Estes Park, there's probably nothing going on. But, yeah, I mean, it just seemed, it was three minutes down. It's literally 
three minutes is a slight exaggeration. It was probably seven minutes, but like it was right down the road. It might've been five. It was right down the road. So I was just like, I'll just, you know I mean? I don't like hassle. You call an ambulance. They want to take, they got all these questions and they, cause the same thing happened to me in LA and I had to call the ambulance and it was horrible. Same thing, same thing happened in LA literally like a year, almost exactly a year later. That time though, it was because I stayed right before I came back from Thailand. I stayed in this $19 a night hotel and I actually ate from their menu. I ordered food. I knew them chicken wings was not chicken. I said, I eat a lot of chicken wings. This is not chicken. I ate anyway. Fast forward three days. I'm back on U.S. soil. I'm back in Los Angeles. I'm about to get on one of the biggest podcasts in the minimalism field, the biggest one. And it happens again. Didn't get to do the podcast with the minimalist. Shout out to them. But uh, and I called the ambulance this time and I was staying in this little crappy Best Western because I had booked a good hotel, but I didn't do my research. And the front desk of that hotel closed at 11 in my train. Did I take the train to L.A.? Yeah, I think I took the train to L.A. And my train didn't get to L.A. till like one in the morning. So I ended up having to stay in this crappy Best Western. Smelled like cigarettes and all kinds of other smoke. And so when the ambulance came to pick me up a couple days later, because the same thing happened, you know, get extremely dehydrated, throwing up, you know, die, all the same stuff. They assumed it was like drugs. I could tell. Like they assumed it was like drugs. I've never been treated. So like, they just didn't care. You know, they were all oh, this guy's always like, what are you, have you taken any drugs? I'm like, no. I just got sick. Like, oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I could just tell they was like, this dude's on something. This is a waste of our time. Um, and yeah, it ended up costing me like the insurance paid it, but like it was like 15. Actually, I don't know. I might have just not paid that. But it was like fifteen hundred dollars for the ambulance. Nah, I'm not doing it. Then I get my money. Then I get my money. Then I do my money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't remember what hospital it was. I know I said I'm never going to the hospital now, even at the hospital. Um I just, I mean, I'm used to like, for example, when I went to the hospital in Estes Park, you know what I mean? I, I, they cared. And there's way fewer patients. So like they can give you better service. And like Estes Park is like very, there's a lot of really rich people who live there. So they got a nice, nice hospital. It pays to be a doctor there. You know what I mean? So everybody's making good money. They got good equipment. There's not a lot of people. You come in there like I came in there. They're going to move, you know, the heaven and earth to take care of you. To take care of you. I'm used to being in places like that. Bozeman, kind of the same thing. Um, which I hadn't lived in. Well, I'd, I'd been to Bozeman before. But you know what I mean? I'm used to being in these seasonal places in the middle of nowhere. The hospitals and doctors. You know, it's different. I'm not used to being in a big city. They ain't got the time. They ain't got the equipment. You just another number in there. I'm not used to that. I said, I'm not going to the hospital. I don't think I've been to L.A. since. I don't think I've been back. Yeah, just not a just not a big fan of the big city. By the way, folks, uh, I'm about to, this. This is ginger beer. It's not beer. This is ginger beer. It's not alcoholic. Someone's going to ask. I don't drink these much, but I've been trying to get my sugar right lately. So, Yeah, some people love L.A. Um, I'm just not a big city, especially not that big city. Um, you know, I'm used to going to the, going to the hospital down in Florida, like a small little small town hospitals. Don't be nobody there. You, you get right in. What's the problem, sir? Come on, get him back, get him back, get him back. Get him back in the back. Let's get you hooked up to something. Bop, 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 bop. A lot of bopping going on as soon as you come in. At the hospital in LA, there was one or two bops the whole three hours. <laughs> Actually, they don't want to help you. Uh, Natalie, I am 42. I'll be 43 this year. Oh, Agnes, you got bad C. diff back in 2018? Yeah, there might have been something, you know, back then, you know, stuff like that could go around. We all got sick. 
it went away. It wasn't a problem these days, you know. Everything's a, a, a huge, you know, world shattering story. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, I don't, I don't wanna get too wrapped up in that, but yeah, man. <laughs> What's my body count? Uh, NBA Wiz Boy, uh, me, me and the homies used to always say, if you if you can if you can keep count, you ain't balling hard enough. <laughs> if you can remember the count, you ain't balling hard enough, player. You better get your counts up. We got, <laughs> you need to have, to have you need to, <laughs> you need to have damn near amnesias, boy, because you put in so much torque. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm that's when I was a younger man. When I was a younger man, I felt that way. That was that was a flashback from my youth when I was in my twenties. Theo, you gonna see forty? You gonna see forty? There's 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 what is it? Twenty seven. This is what we do. This is what we as humans do. There's an age. I think it's twenty seven or something that a lot of celebrities die at. So all the 26 year olds get all worked up because they're like, I don't know. Look at all these people who died at 27. It's a very popular year to die. I always have a couple answers to that. I sit them down. I said, I said, young, young one, sit down. Let, let an OG talk to you. Let Uncle Tim talk to you. Number one, you ain't no celebrity like all these people on this list. Everybody you mentioned on this list was a celebrity. You're not a celebrity. You're working at the Texaco. Nothing wrong with that, but you don't have the same <laughs> ring, ringing up unleaded on pump seven. You don't have the same struggles and stresses as Janis Joplin had. Not to mention, you named off 10 celebrities who died at 27. You didn't name off the 27 trillion people, the 27, the tw the, the 270 trillion people who lived to be who lived to be 27 since the world began. You named 10 people who died. Meanwhile, you personally on your Facebook have a thousand people over 27. You personally have a thousand Facebook friends who are 30 and older, but you think you're going to die at 27 because 10 celebrities did. What are we doing? This is what we do. We come up with these things that make absolutely no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Two hundred seventy trillion, thousand Facebook friends. You know personally, all over twenty seven. Ten celebrities you'll never meet who probably had a drug. <laughs> all this other stuff going on. But you're going to okay. All right. I mean. You got to be logical with this stuff. You got to be logical. Yeah, we create our own stress. It'd be stuff like that. Get people all worked up. You about to have a heart stroke at 26. Because Amy Winehouse died. Shout out to her. RIP to the legend. You got to be smarter than the stuff they put on social media. If it's something that, like, if no one had ever told you about, you wouldn't be worried about, then it's not something you need to worry about. If no one had ever told you, all oh, these people died at 27, you would not have been worried about it. So you don't need to worry about it. We got to be smarter than these little social media posts people put out here. The propagandas. You know why they do stuff like that? To get you all stressed out. So you'll go down there to the psychiatrist. Some other form of doctor. Buy into the big pharmaceutical. It's all a game, man. Come on, man. They do this stuff on purpose. Excuse me. They do this stuff on purpose. Don't fall for it. I mean, it's your life. If you want to stress out. Yeah. 
Not to mention, if you did die at 27, well, they're in good company, apparently. If you like the people on the list. Speaking of people who died young, two very powerful movie trailers just came out. We're going to talk about them. The first one is the one about Marilyn Monroe, blonde. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. They, they, ain't, they, ain't, man, come on, man. Marilyn was that was, come on, man. I got to see that movie. The trailer had me feeling for old Norma Jean. The tra- I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is powerful. I honestly didn't think, y'all can say, real quick, we got to spend a little more time on Marilyn. Y'all can say what y'all want about Marilyn, but come on now. One of the baddest ever. You talk about baddies now, they don't make baddies. They don't make bad, very few baddies like Marilyn Monroe. To still be like the iconic sex symbol, how many years later? Now, some of that is the programming that they've told us she was the iconic. But like, bro, like, come on, man. They, Marilyn, like, they don't. They, no, they don't. They don't. They and say what you want about her. Did none of y'all? Did none of y'all get to see her old? You ain't you ain't seen a picture of, of Marilyn old yet. Something to be said for going out young. There ain't there ain't a picture of her old anywhere on this planet. She bad in every picture. That's legacy. Okay, uh, real quick, Corey Cummins said, "Beware of spectacle people." That's what the movie Nope is about. Super Chat Squad. Thank you, Corey Cummins. I heard that movie was good. I heard that movie was good. Heard that movie was good. Um, so I might check that out. Might check that out. Um, Anna Nicole Smith was another one that. Yeah, uh, I didn't think, I didn't think, shout out to Dorothy Dandridge too. Y'all don't even know who that is. Y'all don't, y'all don't know. No, y'all, y'all forgot about Lena Horne. We are not going to go, they don't know this stuff. They don't know who these people are. I don't know who Lena Horne is. They don't know. I'm trying to educate. Uh, they too young. They don't know. Lena was doing it with none. Lena was doing it with nobody. <laughs> They only, <laughs> anyway, I didn't, sorry, I get all worked up. I start talking about my old movies. Um, I didn't think they were going to be able to top that emotional, like, hit I took from a movie trailer when I saw Blonde until that Wakanda Forever trailer. Son! That Wakanda Forever trailer, boy. You know when you keep repeating watching a trailer? That Wakanda Forever trailer was, was, was deep, boy. Y'all, if y'all ain't seen it, I please stop the stream right now. Go watch it. That Wakanda Forever trailer was deep, boy. That trailer had me proud and sad at the same time. Very, man. I'm going to go watch that Wakanda Forever trailer after I finish streaming. Shout out to Chadwick, man. Chad Bozeman. Shout out to him. And I like the fact that even in the trailer, they had a mural of him. Like, that's respect. That's respect. You know what I mean? Um, that would kind of forever trailer had me choked up. And I thought about it. I thought about it, and I could be wrong on this. I have to go back through you know, my, my movie history. But I was like, I wonder if there's ever been a positive black movie, a positive black movie with that much production. You know, they'll throw a lot of money at 12 years of slave, you know, roots, big budget. But I'm like, I wonder if there's been a positive black movie, that big a production spectacle and hype around. Maybe there has, but I couldn't think of one. And that's why it was very moving to me as well. Because I'm like, you know what I mean? Um, I was having some discussion with some some friends of mine about this when I was in Florida last time. And I was just like, it, it hits you different when like you grew up not seeing you represented equally or in the same way. And you know me, I'm all for equal representation across the board with everything. Um, and that's what makes me be really like sympathetic and empathetic for like people who still aren't getting the representation that they deserve. And that was kind of how the 
the conversation started because they were saying that like, oh, there's certain groups. It seems like they're just trying to push showing them on TV, like down our throats. And I was like, that's because we haven't given them the representation they deserved for so long that now we have to like overdo it, not overdo it, but like, it seems like it's really in our face. And I'm like, but you got to think about what it does to a young boy or girl who identifies with that group to finally see herself or himself on TV. You know what I mean? I know how it feels to me to be sitting in a movie theater when I saw the trailer for Black Panther and was like, oh, snap. There's nothing but black folk in here in this trailer. We we the main superhero character and all the supporting guys. <laughs> it was crazy. And I was 40 at the time. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you got to look at it that way. You can't just, and I understand, I understand their point of view because they're older, white. Um, so, like, they're used to seeing certain things on TV, certain things in commercials, certain things in movies. If you're 70 years old and television has looked the same way for 60 of those years, it's going to be a little weird to you. Totally understand. I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them because they're good people. They're my friends. I wouldn't have been sitting on the porch talking with them if they wasn't good people. But I'm like, hey, you got to look at it beyond your point of view and look at the broader picture of, yeah, this might seem a little off to me because I've been programmed to look at something this way, but who is it benefiting? I always think about the kids. You know what I mean? I want every child to grow up feeling like they are just as equal, normal, regular, important, special, and loved as every other child on this planet. Not like, oh, the TV's telling me that if I look like that, that's normal. I'm abnormal. My stuff is different. No, nah, representation like on television matters. So it's a big deal. So I'm glad I'm glad I live in a day and age. I'm glad I got to be born in the 80s, born in the 70s, raised in the 80s, where there wasn't a lot of it and still be alive now to where there is. But I'm still young enough for like it doesn't just throw me for a loop. Like, oh, this is crazy. You know, and yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of times we don't understand like what certain characters or, 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 or shows do for other groups until like someone says it. Like you said, Captain McCarr. I hadn't even thought about Miss Marvel. You know what I mean? I'm just like, well, that's cool, but you never think like, oh snap, like that's that's a big deal. You know, a lot of these first we see on TV or in or even like in sports and stuff, it's a big deal. By the way, speaking of sports. Speaking of representation, uh, Skylar Deegan Smith, literally one of the most beautiful women ever. I stand by that. One of the most talented, I should have said this first, one of the most talented, athletic, and beautiful women ever. She dropped a clothing line with Puma that debuted on the 2nd of this month. You can go to Puma.com to check it out. I just really love Skylar Deegan Smith. I, it's a woman's clothing line, and I went and almost bought something. Just to support, but they didn't have nothing. I think they had sold out of a bunch of it. But I'm like, I ain't gonna buy it. Like, I was like, maybe they'll have like a shirt that I could wear and might look like a man. They didn't. They didn't. You know. Yeah, Scott Deacon Smith, man. She she how did we get on this whole tangent? We was talking about dating. We we're talking about dating and we just and we just took it. We, I, hey, I like I like it when we take it. Why? Boy, I'm not I'm not feeling the air conditioning today. Usually when I have the air on in the living room and I have my door open, I feel it. I'm not feeling the air conditioning today. Rags, uh, I think that sports and movies and stuff can be a distraction, but I don't think they're always a distraction. You know what I mean? I think as with anything, if you become addicted to it or you do it too much, it can be a problem. So I think you can enjoy movies, you can enjoy sports without allowing them to distract you and keep your mind off of what's really going on. I think it falls to each one of us to make sure that we don't allow anything 
to distract us from what's really going on or things we feel like we need to know. Um, it's the, it's the, you know, age old thing where like, we like to demonize social media. Social media would be absolutely nothing if we didn't use it. So like, it's not us sports and movies and stuff would not exist if we didn't watch it. So you can't blame sports. You can't blame movies. You can't blame meta. You can't blame Instagram. It's us watching it to an unhealthy level, or when it comes to social media, us using it in unhealthy manners, that's the problem. What's up, retired 2019? I disagree. I think we all are created equal. Will there be people with more money than some people? Yeah. Will there be people with more athletic ability? Yeah. Will there be people with more, you know, uh, 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 it, it, there's always going to be inequalities in the system, but I think we as people are equal. And I think like, until you realize that, you're not really getting it. You're not better than me because you have more money than me. You know what I mean? I think we're all born equal, but we're all born unique, different circumstances and stuff. But at the base level, we're all equal as human beings. Once you realize that, then you start to not care as much about money, possessions, looks, talent, all this other stuff. Because everybody's got their stuff. Their good stuff and their bad stuff. You know what I mean? But if you're like, oh, everybody's not always equal because some people have more money than others. You are seeing money you are giving money more, you know, than, than, than what it deserves. Money isn't a big enough thing that I think it matters in my equ equality equation with other humans. And society doesn't matter? Yeah, but I don't live on the societal human plane. I live up on this spiritual whatever plane. Yeah, we're all human. Sun shines on all of us. You know what I mean? Like, Natalie, I wouldn't say I practice spiritual beliefs. Like, I'm a spiritual person. Like, I believe in a higher power. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what practicing spiritual belief means. Um, I just, I just commune with the divine the way that seems normal to me. You know. I got to disagree with the money corrupts thing too, you know, as much as like, I'm like, you know, money, I'm not saying money's not going to buy you happiness. Uh, I think, I think we're wrong. As, as, there's like two camps on money. And I think they're both wrong. One is like money's evil. And the other is like money is the best. I think we're both wrong. I think money is just money. How you use it determines its evil nature. I think the love of money is a problem, you know, um, so I think, yeah, it's just like, you know, money's horrible. Money's the best. Money is not the best. Money does what money does. Money solves money problems. It ain't going to solve any other type of problems. If you're trying to get money to solve money problems, go. If you can't afford certain stuff you need and then you get the money, now you can afford it. Cool. That money solved a money problem. It is not going to make you happy. It is not going to buy you true love. It's not going to buy you peace or contentment. If you use that money to be generous, that's cool. That's cool. Not going to solve any other problems, though. And also, like, it's a, I think it's a problem to just think that money is, is, is bad. Someone might pick a hammer up and hit somebody on the head. That doesn't mean hammers are bad. If you use a hammer properly, it's a great tool. They wouldn't have built the Taj Mahal, wasn't no hammers. So I've heard. Money, when you use it the way it's intended to be used, which is to help facilitate the exchange of goods and services, ain't nothing wrong with it. It's not going to corrupt me because I, I work a job, they give me a check, and I take that money and I pay my bills and I buy groceries. How am I being corrupted?
I think so many of our views on money, money is just money. It's in the middle. If you got money problems, money helps. Other problems, you got to solve them on your own, you know? And I do have to, I'm not coming at you, water baby, but I have to, I have to, you know, he said Jesus was born poor. Buddha was born rich. They wasn't ready for that. They was not ready for that. Huh? Jesus was born poor. Actually, he never said Jesus was poor. He was the son of a carpenter. Never said they was poor. But we'll, we'll argue Jesus was born poor. Buddha was born rich. Two of the greatest like spiritual figures in human history. That just goes to show it don't matter. They both came to the same conclusions. Or very similar conclusions. Jesus poor, Buddha definitely rich. It don't matter. The money, take the, we got to take the money out the equation. Life is just life. Money is just a part of it. Okay, I'm moving on. That boy got, I like that one. That was a good one. I actually really like that one. I need to timestamp that one. I might make a short out of that one. That was, I'll frown us all down. Okay, moving on. Court comes back today. We didn't got so far off topic. I don't know. I don't even remember where we was at with dating. Oh, rags to riches. If, if a man and, and three women want to live together and then have a relationship, I got no problem with that. You know, do you? There's no rules. There's no rules, you know? If you want to date, you know, five men, five women, you're all cool with it, whatever. You know what I mean? There's no rules. If you don't want to date, if you do want to date, how you date, there's no rules. My thing is I just I just do what makes you happy. And going back to the thing where I've given my, myself permission to never date, like, took a lot of stress off of me. I think it's going to make my happiness level go up some. Because I just don't have to like make decisions based on this fact that like I got to be able to do things to make some woman find me attractive enough to call me her own, to date me, to say she loves me. I got friends. They tell me they love me all the time. I'm good. Um, Danielle says, do you think people can get corrupted or is it just a part of who they are? I personally believe that all of us have that in us already. You know what I mean? I think we all have the ability to go over to the dark side. You know, what does that say? This everybody's got two wolves inside of them. You know, the good wolf, the bad wolf. I'm paraphrasing. And the wolf you feed is the one that gets stronger. I think we all got our good side or bad side um, or the ability to like do unspeakable things in this life. And I think it's just a matter of. Some people allow that side. Some people feed that sound, side, excuse me, and allow that side to take over. And some of us don't. You know, I don't I don't think. Now, if you factor in maybe, you know, mental illness or some things like that, I think there's some people who are more likely to behave in certain ways we might call evil. But just taking mental illness out the picture, I think we all have that ability within us. And it's just a matter of what wolf we feed, you know? So I think some people will allow themselves to be, to be corrupted um, or to behave in a corrupt manner. But I think all of us have that ability in us. Who messaging me? No one messaging me. <laughs> Aisha, you're not doing no work? You might as well just go home at lunch. You might as well just go home at lunch, Aisha. Are you, are you probably already had lunch. What time is it where you're at? On the list. Who is? I'm not going. I had a dentist appointment today. I'm not going. I totally forgot about it. They just messaged me. I already paid for it though, so they'll be okay. Yeah, Jazz. There's are there are no rules in dating. Date who you want to date. As many people as you want to date. However you want to date them. There's no rules.
I'm with you, the other side. Um, it, it is a big, it's, I don't know, like, I just feel like we're, there's a lot of, like you mentioned, like the self-improvement stuff. That, like there's always been guys who are going to tell other guys how to get women. I feel like women don't do this as much. Maybe they, I see it sometimes with women too, how to get a good man. I, I'm like, at the end of the day, I think just be you. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I want somebody, if I'm going to date, spend my time with them. I want them to be attracted to me. I don't, I don't want them to ever see anything once we're dating and they'd be like, you do that? You know what I mean? I, 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 I wanted to know. I'm a comic book nerd. I love the WNBA. You know what I mean? I do. You know what I mean? I wanted to know me for me. Be lots of times I ain't trying to cut my hair. You're going to see the hair loss, bae. You're going to see it. I sweat. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to see it all. I don't want to like practice some techniques and tricks to reel her in. And then that's not really me. You know what I mean? I just don't, you know, I just want to be authentic and people to know it. Timothy Guzman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat squad. Timothy Guzman. Appreciate the love says, I must say that at 34 years old, I still have trouble with approach anxiety and communicating with the opposite sex, but we all have challenges we need to overcome. Keep it going, Tim. You're changing lives. Hey, that's all. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've talked about this before. It's still not easy for me to just like in a situation where I don't have a reason to talk to a woman to just walk up and be like, hey, I'm Tim, blah, blah, blah. It, it's it's that easy, but it's an issue. Um, I think it's probably another one of the reasons I'm like, well, why even force it then? If you ain't worried about dating, then you don't have to walk up and talk to nobody. You know, um, and I think that's this ties in to that squad. Thank you. I think this ties into what we we're just talking about all these people and I'm not knocking their hustle and they might actually be helping some people. Um, but all the people who, you know, Oh, I'll show you how to get women. I'll show you how to get men. You got to factor in. Some of us have stuff like approach anxiety or other issues that like, if we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't need your services, you know, or what? I don't know. I just, I'm just like, just be your most authentic self. And like, if somebody's checking for you, they're going to find you. I don't know. Uh, I think the transgender issue in sports is going to be one that, like, it's a tough one. You know, I am all for transgender men and women. I consider myself a transgender ally. With that being said, that's going to be a hard one to, like, get people to wrap their heads around or figure out. I think that even I think transgender, there's a lot of transgender people who are still like, I don't know where I come down. Like, the, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know what, what the I mean, eventually, I think they'll come up with a solution and just be like, this is what we're doing. But it is a hard one. It's a hard one because I see both sides of it. I see both sides of it. You know, um, that's a hard one. So I really don't have an opinion either way. Um, I'll say, I just hope they come up with something that like everybody is kind of something that's fair to the people this actually affects. You know what I mean? I just want it to be something that the transgender community as well as everyone else can be like, all right, that seems fair, but definitely something that like the transgender community is cool with, you know, but that's a hard one. That is a hard one. That That's yeah. Thank you for retracting that message, Supreme. I was you, I was coming. I was coming. Uh, thank you for I respect you retracting that message because I was coming for you. I was coming. Ty Damon, um, I'm not going monk. Um, and I and, and I'm not saying I'm not gonna date. I'm just saying I gave myself permission to not have to date ever again. It's kind of a radical concept you never thought about. I really had it. So someone asked me about it. You know, someone asked me, he's like, hey, if you never dated again, would you be okay with that? And I was like, yeah. And I've been thinking about it the past couple of days. And I'm like, you know what? 
I don't ever have to date again. So I've given myself permission to never date again if I don't want to, if it doesn't happen, which allows me to like not have to stress and worry about dating. Because if it never happens, I'm fine. If it happens, cool. Beautiful thing. If it doesn't happen, that's cool too. You know? But I think um, in our society, we're very like rules, labels. You know, like if someone's like, oh, I'm not dating, they're like, oh, like you even said, are you going monk? So you're like, I, you don't have to be like, I'm never dating. And you also don't have to be like, I'm always looking for dates. You could be in the middle and be like, if it happens, it happens. I think we're just, we play in the extremes too much these days, I think. Everything's is one way or the other. I'm trying to play in the middle. It's just like, I don't ever have to date again and it will be a wonderful, amazing life. Or I might date again one day and it will be a wonderful and amazing life. You know, like my joy and happiness in life isn't dependent on dating. And I think for a lot of people it is, you know. I decided I'm not going to talk to the girl at Target. She was chewing gum when I went there last time. I was like, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to talk to her. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Yeah, I gotta check. I haven't looked into the to the BG, the Britney Griner story. I gotta check on that when I get off here. That's gonna be one of the first things I do. But I'm pretty sure they're gonna swap her out. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I need a specifically a Russian woman. Um, I mean, we're all human, so I don't, I don't. You know what I mean? We're all human. What's the difference? Yeah, yeah, Timothy, you're right. I'm. I'm. I'm letting go of the concept of having to date. And a lot of people, I think, we don't know how how deeply like into that idea we are the idea like i have to date somebody i have to find somebody it's very freeing to like go of that and just be like if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't that's a radical concept wise man i like all women i don't discriminate by uh geographical location nationality none of that i realized they didn't swap her out but I think they will eventually. No, they're gonna they're gonna try to they said they're gonna keep her nine years. I gotta look into that. I gotta look into that. You can be sentenced and then swapped out. Actually, hold on. Why, why are we here? Because now I'm intrigued. Hold on. I'm going to read this real Open the article. Thank you. Where's the rest of the article? In your ear. I'm still here.
yeah, see, I told y'all. Um, let me read one more article. Okay, I don't have time to read the article. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not hopeless yet. I didn't think so. I didn't think so. It's not hopeless yet. There's 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 still negotiation, but you know, there's still negotiation. I got a little nervous there. Um, see, I see, th- and this is what this is this is what what Ty said is what I'm kind of thinking. I'm in no way an expert on this type of stuff, but like if I'm trying to negotiate, so say I got some of your people, right? Say I got some of your people, you got some of my people. The, the more evil I can say the people I have of yours are, the more I can demand from you. Say you have somebody of mine who like killed somebody. If I got two people of yours that just did felonies, it ain't going to equal out. It don't equal out. So the worst charges I put on these people here, the more likely you are to give me someone with worse charges. Does that make any sense? Hey, your person, your, your person here, nine years. We supposed to have them. You got my guy over there. He's supposed to be there 15 years. Yeah, that's a cool swap. We can swap that. Everybody's happy with that. So I think, yeah, it, it's all part of the process, man. It's all part of the process. You know, I think it's all part of the process. I'm hoping it's just bargaining strategy. Because they have to charge her and they have to sentence her. Because if they don't, it'll seem like they had her over there wrongfully. So now they're like, no, we're right. She's a criminal. Y'all have to admit that. Now we'll come to the table and, and talk. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Um, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. I think she's high profile enough that like they'll, they'll see this as a good opportunity. I'm hoping to like get somebody back that otherwise they might not have been able to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't like I don't what do they get out of not trading? She's high profile enough and her her offense was small enough. Like when they catch somebody like spying or like, you know, a soldier or something. That's different because now you've got like this person was actually doing something that could have harmed our country. She just brought a little cannabis oil. So, like, nobody's mad. No Russian is mad if she goes home. You got to think about that, too. Like, there's, you got to think about constituents and people. Certain trip prisoners you swap out, people might be mad. Nobody in Russia is going to be mad if Brittany Griner goes home. And if you get somebody who actually did something that the U.S. is holding in return, that's a win. Okay, this is getting, this is getting too much. Uh, ETA, I would, I would say that Russia would say that America doesn't play by normal rules. You know what I mean? Normal is subjective. So I would imagine Russians would be like, we're playing by the right rules. Those Americans don't play by the normal rules. And I would imagine China would say that about both of us. I don't know what the Russians and the Americans are doing. Like this is the way, you know what I mean? Normal subjective. There are no rules in, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, I think normal subjective, you know, they, Russia's play by Russian rules. U.S. plays by U.S. rules. Who's to say who's right or wrong, you know? Most people, just the country they're in, they decide is the right rules because that's the rules they know. But, like, oh, Michaela, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad. And thanks, Tim, for everything. Also, do you date someone younger than you? Uh, Michaela, 18 to 80, I don't discriminate. As long as she's a legal adult. 
If she fine, she fine. If everything else is there, I don't, I don't discriminate. I don't discriminate. Older, younger, same age, it don't. When I was on Tinder a couple of days ago, when I was out of town, there was a nice 50, 59 year old. Woo! Swiped right. I think she actually matched with me. I never messaged her back though. Yeah, man, I don't discriminate, man. It don't age means nothing to me. Like, as long as it's legal, as long as there ain't no trouble. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't, you know. Don't bother me, 18 to 80. Period. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't limit myself. What if I met somebody who was 60 who was amazing? What if I met somebody who was 25 who was amazing? Like, I don't limit myself. I just don't have these all these rules everybody else has. I just don't like. I just don't have these rules in life. Robert checking it from Sweden. I just don't, you know. I, I give myself a lot of leeway and just freedom in life. That's what I'm about. I'm just all about freedom and yeah, Luke, 18 to 80, blind, crippled, crazy. It don't matter. I'm, I wouldn't do crazy. It'd have to be my type of crazy. There is a type of crazy I like. I am low-key attracted to a certain type of crazy. Not like slash your tires, kerosene, your clothes crazy, but there's a certain type of like crazy kind of free spirited, weird. That's kind of hot to me. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I, a certain type of crazy. The other side, you know, if I meet an older woman and she like, man, my sex drive just ain't what it is. Okay, mine's not either. Like, that's another thing. I just really don't care if sex happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Like, I just don't. Sex is a lot of work, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm different. Like, it just... I could, you know, if I was in a relationship, once a week would be fine with me. And she might be like, not this week. I'd be like, okay. Like, you know, I don't really, I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, the only rule, she got to be hot. She got to be fine. And fine to me. She may not be fine by society standards. There's women all the time. Like, when I'm at work, and I always have a lot of female friends. So, like, you know, we'll be sitting around. And they'll be like, who do you who think is hot? You know, they'll be telling me the guys they think are hot. I'll be telling the women that I think are hot. I'm like, damn, she is fine to me. They'll be like, what? I'm like, she is fine. they be like, her? I'm like, yes, you don't see it. they be like, no. Like, I, I got, my tastes are a little different. I'm outside the matrix. Exactly, Armando. Supreme, I don't know who this Andrew guy is you're talking about. So I don't know who this is. Wendy, hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm different, Waffle. Like, I just don't, I don't know, man. I just don't limit myself. Life's too amazing. There's too many potentials to be like, oh, yeah, it might be the perfect person for me, but they're 10 years older than me, so I can't do it. What would that even, I don't know, that's just me. But yeah, if you ever want to, you ever want to, you know, get people riled up. And from my experience, especially women, be 30 something and date somebody in their 20s. Oh, 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 people do not like it, which makes me want to do it even more. Um, Prof, what up, what up, what up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, International Super Chat Squad. So with no wife or girlfriend, how do you deal with no action down south? Um... There are lots of, if, if you're talking about like sexual stuff, there's lots of people who are the same. It's not that hard to find somebody to have sex with. It's 2022. It's really not, <laughs> it's really not that hard to find somebody to have sex with. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, my sex drive isn't what it used to be, but when those moments roll around, you know, we we have the phone. Um, so, yeah, it's really not. Yeah, it's that that's really not an issue. 
honestly, I mean, the majority, like, and I think it's totally different for me because, like, I rarely date. So the vast majority of people I've ever been with were just, like, friends for benefits or, like, one-night stands. Only very few people, very few of the times I've had sex have been, like, with people I was dating. So, yeah, to me, it's, that's normal to me. Um, but, yeah. A woman seven years older said you were too young to date retired 2019. Wow. Wow. See, see these, like, people are, <laughs> and y'all both grown, grown. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. That, come on, man. Like, see, people limit themselves over st stupid stuff like age. Now, imagine a world where we didn't keep track of our ages. You and that same woman met, she'd have no issue. The simple fact that we keep track of ages She's like, oh, you too young. That's what I'm saying. Like, people are interesting, man. People are, like, the world is, is funny, man. Wendy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate that. Thank you. Don't blow up. It, I, yeah, if, if I really dated an 80-year-old, that'd probably be, it'd be great conversation. I learn all kinds of stuff. That actually sounds kind of fun. Go meet her up the old folks' home. Free lunch. She's in bed by like three. <laughs> Go visit her from like eleven to three. I get the rest of my day off, bro. I'm gonna get, get thrown in the wheel early. <laughs> Y'all boys tripping. She don't use the car no more. I'm just whipping. Be <laughs> whipping her Audi. Come on, man. Y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm really up on this. Somebody. <laughs> Aisha, you invited a guy over to play video games. Let's start there. Let's start. Th anyway, um, <laughs> you want to cuddle your pet fight and offend it? I'm just going to, you invite a man over to play video games. He thinking something's going to happen. He thinks something goes happen. Mm-hmm. That 80-year-old probably got a nice retirement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. High vibes. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the journey. That and I agree, like this is what I'm saying. The divorce rates are so high, and yet we still follow this ideal that society uh, perpetrates that like everybody could find the one and live happily ever after. All it takes is a simple Google search and it'll tell you at least 50% of them happy ever after ain't gonna happen. Half. Half ain't gonna happen. And of those half that they stay together, who knows what it looked like? You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, it's just crazy to me that we blindly go after something that we know, I don't, know, I don't know. If you want to get married, get married, but go into it with your eyes open. That's that's all I can say. Go into it with your eyes open. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to wrap it up. We're going on the two hour mark and I've told myself we're going to keep these at around two hours. This is one of those streams I could probably keep going for another hour or two, but yeah, we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, we got like 45 more seconds. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, like I said, this was kind of an impromptu topic, was not the topic I wanted to talk about today, but uh, tomorrow, I think we're supposed to talk about um, sobriety. Tomorrow's Friday, right? So yeah, I will definitely do that topic. It might be later in the day, though, just because I think sobriety on, on a Friday evening will hit a little harder than sobriety on a Friday morning, uh, maybe get more people to uh, you know join in. So, but yeah, we're going to be back tomorrow. Same bat channel different bat time. I appreciate y'all spending time with your boy. Uh, big shout out to the Super Chat Squad, everybody who showed love. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the communication, the love. I love each and every one of y'all. I'm sending love right back to you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to y'all later.